And that's a failure on you. I believe that you, sir, should resign. That would be leadership. Whether or not it's true or not. If I can. Was it a real, I mean, is the transcript untrue? Uh, again, uh, I'm, not, I'm not commenting on any purportedly uh, leaked transcripts. I'm telling you what, uh, based on my uh, knowledge of the conversation the president said, uh, and uh, what he said was exactly what he said in public. We're sending taxpayer dollars to Afghanistan right now for humanitarian relief. Who are we sending that to? To NGOs and to the United Nations agencies who are using that assistance, not to the Afghan government. Not to the, not to the Afghan, the Taliban government. Even in your opening statement, you can't be honest with the American people. You stated, and I quote, that by January 2021, the Taliban was in its strongest military position since 9-11. I'm pretty sure their strongest military position has been during your entire administration, not prior to it. In fact, their strongest military position since the towers were hit in 2001 was this past September 11th, the 20th anniversary, all of which happened on your watch, not your predecessors. In fact, on April 27th of this year, days before the original deadline negotiated by the Trump administration that you and the Biden administration violated, the Taliban controlled 77 districts in Afghanistan. The Afghan government controlled 129, and there were 194 contested districts. By August 15th, while you and Biden were on vacation, the Taliban had taken and controlled 304 districts, and the government only controlled 37. From May to August of this year, while you, the Department of Defense, and the president did absolutely nothing, the Taliban gained 227 districts in Afghanistan in just four months. You can't claim ignorance to what was going on there, and you can't blame the Trump administration for your failure. I served in Iraq, and I'm well aware of our capabilities. Your administration in the White House was seeing in real time what was happening in Afghanistan, and you did absolutely nothing to stop it. In fact, you did what you could to conceal the facts. Biden himself tried to get President Ghani to lie about what was happening on the ground. Biden told Ghani that, quote, the perception around the world and in parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things aren't going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. And there's a need, whether it's true or not, there's a need to project a different picture. That was on July 23rd, before all of you went on vacation. So you knew exactly what was going on there and did nothing to start moving our people out or our SIVs out until it was too late and the Taliban controlled the entire nation. Secretary Blinken, exactly one week ago, four of my constituents escaped Afghanistan, the first known to leave the country since your administration abandoned American citizens in Kabul on the 30th of August. Your officials left this young mother and her three children behind. The youngest was two years old. The family remained hidden and terrified for 12 long days until my team and a group of brave patriots on the ground facilitated their evacuation. During this time, the State Department did nothing to help this family. Instead, you directed them to go to the Taliban checkpoints repeatedly, where the mother eventually had a pistol placed to her head, and then told them to stay in their homes as the Taliban went door to door searching for American citizens and Afghan allies. All while you were vacationing in the Hamptons and your diplomats were safe in Doha. Then miraculously, after their safe arrival, the State Department jumped in to claim full responsibility for what had happened. The response from your team is revolting. It takes credit from the brave patriots who risked their lives to actually bring my constituents home safely. You had no plan or a horrible plan to get people into the gate. Just get them through the gate. My colleagues and I had hundreds of people on the phone that were U.S. citizens sitting at the gates and they couldn't get in. That's a failure on you, either to plan or you had a horrible plan. Yeah, I mean, th this was uh, fatally flawed, poorly executed. Uh, we had the loss of U.S. service members as a result. We should not have been operating off of an arbitrary July 31st deadline. Instead, what we should have done was tell the Taliban that we are going to leave Afghanistan when we're done bringing every last American home, not operating off of some arbitrary date. We shouldn't have collapsed Bagram when we did. We shouldn't have been relying on the Taliban to provide security at the airport. Uh, we shouldn't have been allowing billions of dollars worth of U.S. weapons and equipment to get turned over to Afghanistan. You, the administration, should not have been lying and misleading the American public, like when a, the, the White House press secretary is standing out there, uh, to, to the press and to the American public and saying that Americans aren't stranded, even though we all know that they are. And I'm concerned that this administration with incompetency is exposing a vulnerability that other countries, like we see North Korea now testing long-range missiles. We see Iran enhancing uranium enrichment. What happens when China and Russia and uh, Hamas and Hezbollah and Al-Qaeda and, and the Taliban, they continue to press forward because we have an administration that doesn't know how to confront an adversary, under, understanding that they do not respect weakness, they only respect strength. 
And, and it, it is so greatly unfortunate, the consequences, and I believe that you, sir, should resign. That would be leadership. The secretary has done no wrong. It was an option, and I made it as an option as I've done with every member. Those allies of ours uh, who have raised concerns about how we went about pulling out of Afghanistan and about failing to coordinate with them as we did. Yeah, thank you. Um, a couple of things. First, you're so right to point to uh, our allies and partners uh, who stood with us uh, on 9-11 and in all the days and time uh, thereafter. How long was your recent interview with the FBI and was it a deposition? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're referring. Are you saying that you have not had a recent interview with the FBI since becoming Secretary of State? I'm, uh, I, I'm not sure what you're referring to, uh, and I'm happy to take that uh, up with you offline. Did the, did the State Department turn over documents to the FBI related to Hunter Biden, Burisma, and or the Blue State Strategies Co Corporation? Uh, you'll have to uh, So you have no knowledge the, uh, of this? You have had no... You don't you are you saying you have not, not had an interview it, it with would, the FBI it would, since it would not be appropriate for me to comment uh, in a public forum on any uh, legal proceedings that the department uh, I'm, not asking I, you to not I'm not asking you to comment on the legal proceedings. I'm just asking if you've been interviewed by the FBI since becoming secretary of state. Um, again, I'm not going to comment one way or another on any uh, legal proceedings or not uh, that may or may not have uh, happened. Have you um, let, let me remind the gentleman that the topic of this hearing is Afghanistan. That's what we're... I, I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman, but the Secretary generally refuses to answer questions about Afghanistan, so I just figured we'd talk about something you should be intimately familiar with. The situation we find ourselves in is far worse, in my judgment, as a former chairman of Homeland Security Committee, far worse than pre-9-11. To make matters worse... We abandoned Americans behind enemy lines. We left behind the interpreters who you, Mr. Secretary, and the President both promised to protect. I can summarize this in one word, betrayal. The America I know keeps its promises. The most important promise in our military is no man left behind, no one left behind. But you broke this promise. Unfortunately, it wasn't the only promise this administration broke. In April, President Biden promised, quote, we will not conduct a hasty rush to the exit, and we will do it responsibly, deliberately, and safely. But that promise was broken. And then in July, the president said, quote, there's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of the United States Embassy in Afghanistan. That promise was also broken. Our standing on the world stage has been greatly diminished. Our enemies no longer fear us, and our allies no longer trust us. Sorry to go on so long. Thank you. And I'll turn it back to you, man. I guess that's who I'm turning it back to. I don't know who. Anyway, whoever is to do the talk. Can I ask you a question? Of course. One of the things that... Uh, I've been working on it with some others, is it Oh, I know. I, I, I think it'll be this spring. I think we'll be able to do that this spring. I feel confident that uh, by summer we're going to be well on our way to heading toward herd immunity.